Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Shannon. I help female entrepreneurs get wealthy through financial management and money mindset. And today I'm doing my very first financial case study. It's going to be so much fun. So these financial case studies are about me looking at the financial situation of a range of entrepreneurs from newbies to experienced entrepreneurs to people making lots of income to people making no income. And then I'm showing them how to hit their financial goals. So whether it's they want to pay off debt, they want to save money, they want to make more money in their business, I'm going to be showing them how they can get there in this very first financial case study. All right, guys, let's get into it. Okay, my first financial case study comes from a photographer who is making one hundred to about one hundred fifty thousand dollars per year in her photography business. So first of all, that's fucking amazing, right? Like that's incredible. She is on to six figures. Um, she has medical debt and her house debt, so a mortgage. She wants to invest for the future retirement and in her children's future too. She also is paying roughly. $500 to $1,000 extra a month on top of her mortgage payment to pay it down quicker. So before I jump in and tell you guys my four-step plan for her to hit this goal, I want to test you guys and see what you think. All right. So should she, first step, should her first step be A, to pay off her mortgage, B, pay off her debt, C, raise her prices, or D, have a savings account. Take a minute to think about it. Put it in the comments, A, B, C, or D. I can't recite them because I don't remember what I said. So <laughs> you can put them down in the comments. I'm going to show you probably in about five seconds what the answer is. <laughs> okay, let's move on. This is my four-step person I plan for her. Her first step should be to pay off that medical debt. Not her house debt. I'll get into that. Not her house debt, but that medical debt she talked about should be her very first step. Her second step should be that she has a three to six month emergency savings. Step number three, I'm going to be talking about where she should actually be putting her money. Instead of putting it towards her mortgage, where else should that money go? And I'm going to be showing you why it matters. And step number four, the business changes she can make so she can make more money, save for retirement, put it towards her children's futures, and hit those financial goals she was talking about. All right, so let's talk about step number one, paying off that medical debt. Now, it's so important for step number one that you are paying off your debt because anytime you are giving money to the banks, right? Like if you're carrying credit card debt, you are just giving money to the banks all the time and you're not actually letting your money work for you, which what you could do is if you kept that money and it's more expensive to carry debt, it is. It's way more expensive to carry debt. It will keep you stuck at a lower income. It'll keep you stuck at like a lower income bracket. It'll keep you stuck, you know, just kind of not being able to become wealthy and step into that, you know, upper middle class or middle class, if that's your goal or the 1%, right? Whatever your goal is, it's going to stop you from getting there because it's very expensive to carry debt. So what I'm telling her is that extra money, that $500 to $1,000 that she's currently putting towards paying off her mortgage, uh -uh. I'm going to tell you to put that to that medical debt first. So that's the first step I want her to take. Step number two is I want to make sure she has an emergency savings. So here's an exception to this rule, right? I'm telling her to pay off her debt first, and then to have an emergency savings of three to six months. The exception to this rule is that if you do not have any savings at all, let's say you're watching this and you're trying to follow along and figure out what would be the best step for you to do, right? In your business or in, in your personal financial situation, the best thing you can do is to actually create a thousand dollar buffer before you pay off your debt. I have done this, uh, backwards. I've did it. Well, I've done it both ways, right? Here's what I've done is I, before I've gotten big chunks of money and I put it all towards my debt. And then because I'm an entrepreneur, my income is inconsistent. Guess what happened? I got back into debt because I didn't have that thousand dollar buffer. So do the thousand dollar buffer before you pay off debt. 
And then what you can do is create the thousand dollar buffer first, pay off the debt second. Third step would be to create this emergency savings. Now, also for you entrepreneurs out there, for you photographers, for you coaches, you also want to have an emergency savings in your business. You want to have about a three to six month buffer in your business, especially because this client is a photographer. The the pandemic really affected the wedding industry. I mean, just the wedding industry, obviously lots of industry. Really important that you learn from this pandemic. Hey, shit can happen all the time. And it's really important that I try to keep my business afloat. So that's what that emergency savings will do for you. All right. All right. Step number three, I am going to say something that will blow any of you Dave Ramsey fans. I'm going to say something that's going to blow your mind. I don't want her to pay off her house. I actually want her to invest her money into index funds or anything. It's like basically just your basic Warren Buffett, you know, safe space to put your money, Warren Buffett stocks. That's what I like to say. It's just the basic stocks. So for example, she can put this money in a 401k. She can put this money in an IRA, something that's just simple and basic. And I'm going to show you why I came to this conclusion. And you're going to be a little shocked. All right. So I'm going to be showing you what you can do with your money instead of putting any more extra money towards paying off your mortgage. And there's going to be certain people this will work for and certain people it won't. So let's watch that clip. Okay, guys. So here is how we are going to figure out whether it makes sense to pay off your mortgage or to invest that money in other places. I'm using something called a mortgage prepayment versus investment analyst calculator. I have the link down below so you can test out yours and see what makes sense for you. And what I have in here is a $350,000 mortgage, a current monthly payment of $1,500, an APR of 3%. This is not actually just FYI. This is not actually my client's information. Um, I didn't ask for details. So I'm just going off like a basic kind of generalized number. <laughs> uh, potential investment return, 7%. And I got that because the general investment return when you uh, invest into 401k index funds is around 7%. Amount of monthly money that she would be investing would be $1,000. Again, she said $500 to $1,000. I'm just going to go with $1,000. Length of the loan was 30 years. Now check this out, right? Okay. So if she, this comparison ends after 14 years, which is the time it takes off to pay off the loan by prepaying the extra thousand dollars. So the calculator takes that into, um, the calculator will take that into its calculations. So it's not just going by her not doing it. It's comparing both those numbers. At the end of that time, the investment balance of $294,742 is $78,313 more than the loan balance at that point. So in your case, it is wiser to invest the extra money you have each month than prepaying the loan. So what this is saying, guys, is instead of her putting that money towards paying off her mortgage faster, if she puts this money into index funds, 401k stocks, she will make $78,000 more than paying off her house just in one chunk. Now, what this also means is it means her house will be paid off and she will have $78,000 more. So this is a no brainer, right? <laughs> All right. Step number four is about the business changes she can make so she can hit those financial goals. Now, she seems pretty happy in her business. It seems to be at this point where she's, you know, really satisfied with the income she's making from it. Her expenses are around $1,500 a month. And I'll talk about them in the next step around what we can do about that. But for right now, I mean, the only thing I would say to her that she's going to run into is she will start to get capped out. Around $100,000 to $150,000, you'll find most photographers are starting to feel pretty spread thin at that point. So she needs to start looking at how she can create a scalable offer in her business. So this is something where it's not just you being there with one person anymore. Like if you have a coaching business, you know, one-to-one -one is not a truly scalable. There are ways to make it scalable, but it's not a truly scalable path in your business. 
Um, there's, of course, there's different things you can do. You can have like a hundred thousand dollar coaching package. You can, um, take like a percentage of your client's income. Of course, there's ways to do it, but the biggest way is to have an offer where it's not just you working with one person. It's you working with many people at once, something like a course, or for her, it could be making her photography system that she has the way she edits photos, the way she takes photos, the way she poses people. That's something she can turn into a system that then she can teach to multiple photographers who work underneath her. Maybe she doesn't want to go that route. Maybe she doesn't want to train a whole bunch of photographers. That's fine too. There are several different ways to make your business scalable. And I will tell you this, any business is scalable. Any business can be scalable. So what I suggested for her to do was to read this book because this book is just full of genius ideas. And it talks all about how you can actually make your business scalable. And like I said before, any business is scalable. And once you start getting to those high amounts of income, you really have to start thinking, how can I make this business scalable if she wants to hit her financial goals? So the next step that she's going to do in her business is she is going to, for the month of December, come up with the number that she wants to pay herself come up with the amount of profit she wants, come up with the amount of taxes she's going to pay. And then underneath that comes her expenses. Now, this is from the book Profit First, and this is about having a profit first based business model. And what this focuses on is saying, I want to pay myself this much. I want to have this much profit. And anything that's left after that is what I have to figure out. Because most of us go about, here's my expenses, and then here's my taxes I have to pay. And then we just get whatever's left over, right? We get like the sloppy seconds. We get like whatever is there, right? And it's like our business comes first. Our business eats all the money. It needs all the stuff, right? But what if you had a business that instead you said, I want to pay myself this much. So what do I need to cut back or what can I do? You know, there's so many platforms right now in the entrepreneur world that are putting everything all on one platform, for example, right? Like I use ConvertKit and ConvertKit went from being like an email program, like an email software, an email hosting site to like a funnel hosting site to now it is, it's branched out into landing pages. It's also branched out into um, hosting your course and software and becoming like a payment processor. I know Kajabi does everything from website to email to landing pages to payment processing. I mean, it does everything. So I'm watching a lot of platforms trying to become an all-in-one. And that's so, that's like a perfect way you can cut back on your expenses. So is there anything that can be done using one platform? Really think, it's honestly just like thinking differently about money in your business, where it's not about what, you know, what's left over at the end of the month. It's you no, know, what do, what profit do I want? How much do I want to pay myself? And I'm going to make my expenses fit into what it's ever left. So that was my challenge to her. The last thing I challenged her to do in her business. Money can work for her without her working more. I showed her that she can make money from that extra, from putting that money into a 401k or into the stocks or into index funds, whatever makes sense for her, whatever she doesn't have maxed out right now. And that will show her how she can be able to create this wealth that doesn't require her to always be working all the time. It also, sometimes, you know, when I look at people who want to pay off their house, it's almost like sinking your money into something. It's like sinking your money into something that is, it's just, it's paid off and that's it. I do believe that paying off your house is a personal choice. I can sit down with you and show you all the numbers and say, you know, this makes the most sense is to actually put your money into a 401k. I right? Index funds. But at the end of the day, some people would just prefer not to have that mortgage payment. You know, some people just don't want it there. And that really is a personal preference as long as you know what it looks like financially and what you're giving up financially. So you're giving up like that $80,000. She will also have a paid off house. You know, she will also have a scalable business that she'll be able to hit her financial goals. So guys, I hope you enjoyed my first financial case study. I have three more that are going to be coming out and these have actually been super fun. If you are interested and you wanna be 
on one of my videos and I can do a financial case study with you. I ask that you be someone who is operating a business, whether it's a small business, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you have an online business, um, I ask that you own a business and that you also have to tell me all of your personal financial stuff. <laughs> so if you're interested in that, it's always done completely anonymous. No one will know your name or anything like that or your business, always completely anonymous. Send me an email at Shannon at ShannonDPalma.com. I'll leave the email for you in the link and just say like financial case study in the title. And I'll give you some of the information that I need and we can go from there. And I hope to hear from you guys. This has been super fun. Let me know if you enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos like this, I'd love to create some more. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>